Hey guys, it's Taja Simone and I am about to get into some real tea today. I'm gonna keep things honest. In this video, there's gonna be nothing but honesty and integrity because that's what I stand on. That's what I live my life by. But it's only so much, it's only so much respect you can give talking about this, this type of shit. So just getting straight into it. If you follow me on Facebook, you know I went live a few days ago and um, had to speak on some things because I had family members coming from me, coming from my dad's family, coming from my dad who's been dead since he was 21 years old. What does a 21 year old who died has to do with anything that I posted? But that's neither here or there. Not only is Auntie Obama pointing the finger at the other side of my family. Interesting is, if just let's just say they did do it. Who the fuck finna walk around knowing that all of these people rape their niece and not bust a motherfucking grape in a fruit fight? The hell makes a status and say all these people raped their niece? Bitch, and what did y'all do? Now let me continue. I'm gonna start from the very beginning. So, in Arbor Crossing Apartments, my mother called us in a room and she said her boyfriend's name, I'm gonna call him Big Black, okay? So she said Big Black, let me write that down so I won't get confused. We all know Big Black is my mama boyfriend, now husband, okay? She said Big Black said he won't be with me no more if I don't let him touch y'all. And she was like, can y'all do something for me? Y'all gotta help y'all mama out, don't y'all want a daddy? And we was like, no mama, we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna do that. So, um, maybe like a few days go by, he comes back. We're in our room, but I'm not asleep. I hear them arguing. And she's saying to him, they love you. They not gonna wanna do that. She's crying. And he said, well, convince them. And walked out of Arbor Crossing Apartments and slammed the door. She dropped to her knees and she said, why does every man that I wanna be with or I like, why do, why do they want my kids? She was got her face in her hands crying. Got up and I came outside and I said, mama, are you okay? And she said, yeah, I'm okay, Tell you go get back in your bed. That's what I did. Few days go by, maybe I, maybe it's a couple weeks. I, I'm not sure on the time frame of, of how, much, how much time went by in between um, the next event, but he comes back. Um, but before he gets there, she tells us to take all of our clothes off. She takes her clothes off. We're like, we are very confused. He comes in the room. Mind you, in Iber Crossing Apartments, I was only in the kindergarten. So I was a kid kid. He comes in and he pulls his penis out. And he said, do you, do you know what this is? And, she, and he asked us to put it in our mouth and we said no. We went back in our room and he called my sister and me back in the room. And one, made us suck his penis. That was the first time that, um, from my knowledge, that someone had touched me. Now, you have to understand, my mom dated another guy. I'm going to call him Big H. Okay, I'm going to call him Big H. My mom dated Big H prior to her husband, and my sister was molested by Big H. Um, this is something that people know in my family. Very evil man. Um, he even... He even beat her best friend ass. And she didn't do nothing but stood there and watch. And when he said, who do you choose? She chose her boyfriend over her best friend. She also chose her boyfriend over her kids. Her now husband is not the only one who, who's touched her children. That was when I started to be touched. Because you have to understand, if I was in a kindergarten before, you know, at that time, that mean I was way younger during the time she was going with big age. So... My sister had already had been going through things prior to that. He came in my room one time. She made me suck his penis. You know, I did it and she said, he asked her, could he ejaculate in my mouth? And she said, we're not going that far. They would keep us separated. So I never, I never couldn't, I never knew what was happening in the other room to my sister. Cause that once they started to, to, to abuse us, they kept us separated. I had to stay in my room and she had to stay in her room. Abuse went on and went on. They used to call us their servants. Um, they used to just 
talk under our clothes down us i mean just the verbal abuse a verbal abu abuse is enough to break any any kid down especially if they in kindergarten and you know man i'm telling you but i was brutally beaten by the time i was seven years old and that was because it got to the point that he was scared that we were going to tell on him my mom called me and my sister in the room he was sitting in a chair with a black hoodie on and a gun on his lap telling us we can't tell on him and you know he felt confident with my sister he felt confident that she wasn't going to tell but I, I probably at the time i was saying no but i knew deep down in my soul that i i knew that i was going to be the mother i was going to be the one i was going to be the one and he did too and so he beat the dog shit out of me beat me unconscious and my mom set in arbor crossing if you ever been in arbor crossing apartments in the muskegon michigan i can go show you the exact apartment we lived in a long hallway it's a living room a kitchen my room was the first room my sister room was the second room my mom room was at the the end of the hallway at the at the end her room was in her bathroom and it was a bathroom outside um of me and my sister's room that's how our apartment was set up yeah beat me unconscious and so and my mom sat in her bed with her legs crisscrossed like this. So my legs was in between her legs crisscrossed. And she was holding my arms and letting him beat the shit out of me. And I was screaming for my mother. Screaming, telling her I love her. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna tell, I promise. Can't describe to y'all as a daughter what the fuck that did to my soul, how I felt. It was the most beyond hurtful. It hurt my soul, right? I'm, 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 I'm a kid. I told myself I wasn't gonna cry. I'm gonna thug it out. I'm gonna try my best. How could you let him beat you like that? Tasia. Ma, no, 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 no. I'm tired, mama. You have to be honest. You're the only parent that I have living. Mama, mama, mama. I told you I was screaming for you, mama. I told you I loved you. Please, you was holding me the Tasia. It's almost over. And you let that happen to me. You didn't even have your other two children. I went nothing but in preschool or kindergarten. So how could you let that happen to me? How? Mama, how could you do that? How could you do that? You're the only parent we had. You're the only thing that we had. So my mom thought I was dead. She's on the phone with someone. I eventually woke up, but when I woke up, I didn't say anything. I was so battered and so hurt. And I laid there, but my face was towards the window. So she couldn't see my face. And I heard her, I, I, well, the first thing that happened when I started to wake up is I could hear. Before I opened my eyes, I could hear before I could see. So I was still kind of out, but I started to hear. So that's when I became more conscious. And I, and, and I heard her on the phone and she was trying to figure out what to do with my body. She was explaining to my sister, my oldest sister, that I was always going to be her sister. And, you know, no matter what, like basically explaining to her, like she gone and she going to always be a sister and da, 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 da. And, these are things that we both remember. This isn't just me. But once I gained the strength to speak, I said Shay very faintly. And she was like, Taja, Taja, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, Shay, I was screaming. You didn't hear me. She was like, I didn't hear you, Taja. You know what? My sister probably was just scared too. We was both young. And, um, I remember going being like the, throughout the day I got I was getting worse and worse and my mom got scared she sped up Apple Street in Muskegon Michigan and went to I'm not even gonna say I'm gonna make up a street I'm gonna say she went to C Street see she went to C Street in Muskegon Michigan and banged on the door and took me to my grandmother and my aunts. My aunt didn't live there at the time, but my that was my grandparents' home. And um, 
which y'all have to understand is my my grandfather had raped my sister already. My sister was raped by my mom's boyfriend, member Big H, and she was also raped by my grandfather. I'm going to just talk about me. I'm not going to get into my sister's life and, 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 and anybody else. I'm going to leave it here because if I don't, it's so the story is so large that if I don't keep it here, it's going to get confusing. But I just said that to say that they didn't give a fuck about me that happening because they wanted me to learn that whatever whatever goes on in this house and whatever happens in this house stays in this house and that's why you got your ass beat like that because not only is your mother's boyfriend big h used to be a pet well he is a pedophile she broke up with him and got with big black big black a pedophile they all pedophiles so they all want it to be quiet right the aunt said get her out of here get her out of here i ain't going to jail for y'all get her out of here Cause she what molested me. My aunt molested me. Made me eat her vagina when I was a kid. I'm not even gonna put no time frame on it because when I did that before, she kept saying, "You're a liar. You're a liar." My aunt, my dad's twin, ended up seeing me and asked my mom like what the hell happened to her my mom was crying to her and saying like oh she can't say and if she says something um we're gonna die someone's gonna kill us and all this weird shit so my aunt she my mom made my aunt promise her that she would not tell my grandmother she ended up telling my grandmother anyway which infuriated my mother my grandmother being the mother that she is, you have to understand my father is dead at this point. He died, he drowned in Lake Michigan from an undertow at 21 years old. So we're all she has left of him. She wants to protect us. She goes and tries to have a conversation. They totally shut her down. Mind you, she had already come together with, with the mother of with my grandmother she had already come together and tried to get big big h for molesting my daughter that they met at my grandmother's house with a social worker to get big h right but like i said i'm not going to even get into my sister's story but i have to kind of touch on some parts because it helps you understand my story when she told my grandmother and they started having questions and they started to think certain things were weird that's when she decided to take us away from them. We were we were taken away from my grandmother for seven, seven years because at that point they didn't want my other side of, of the family in our business. They didn't want them to know the weird shit that they were doing. So they tried to flip it. So it is a situation that happened on my dad's side, another child, um, and it was not rape. I'm not saying I'm not justifying anybody touching anybody because honestly, I believe that no no kid should be touching no kid. And no, but I will say that that situation that happened, he was probably no more than eight years old. It's a big difference between a kid touching the kid because I will say, as an adult, kids don't realize the psychological trauma that they're putting on another child. They don't understand that this is something that they're gonna have to get through and, and heal from maybe for the rest of their lives. Because, you know, when you get touched as a, as a child, it, 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 it interferes with your sex life. It interferes with your comfortability. It, it interferes with your worth. It inter not your worth, because you're worth something, but I'm saying how you view yourself. It interferes with a lot of things, your trust for other people. It, 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 your comfortability with your body being feeling sexy you know and being oh and, and feeling like it's okay to feel like that it interferes with a lot of um other areas in your life and i and at eight years old nine years old you don't understand that someone's probably touching that child and that's probably why that child's doing that in that situation just so you guys know was handled accordingly in court so this is not something that did that did not go unhandled but let me let me let me tell y'all something so they decided to say okay they keep asking these questions they doing too much we need to get these kids away from them because all these pedophiles don't want people to know that they're pedophiles so my aunt is sitting at the table and she's crying and she does and and, and you know me i've always been this way thank thank god for my father and they knew i was the one they was like, oh, it's going to be her. My auntie was like, it's her. We got to kill her. We got to kill her. She going to tell. She going to tell. 
because if I was saying I'm finna tell on Papa, my mama, big black, uh, you, my mama, like I was, I knew because I knew that it wasn't right. I knew, but I, but you have to understand, I'm fatherless, I'm def defenseless, and I'm a bunch of, I'm around a bunch of pedophiles and weird ass people, and then you got my daddy's side who trying to help, but then now they didn't do this situation in their face, like, oh, nope, this happened over there, you can't see them no more whole time, this the same shit that's going on over here, but it's grown motherfuckers, none of my cousins from my daddy's side, Besides that situation, especially none of my older cousins, they've never touched me. My cousins, my uncles, my uncles have never made me feel uncomfortable, touch me, nothing. My grandmother has never touched me. So, you know, these are the allegations that they're trying to say now, but that's just totally not true. So anyway, um, she was like, we got to kill her. We got to kill her. She going to tell. And my grandmother said... You you know you you are acting like this is your man because she was crying about you know my grand my dad can't go to prison da, 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 da. and she was crying and just doing the most and my granny said you're acting like this your man or something and she said that is my man.